What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video and this one is going to be extremely challenging because today we are flying the Harrier GR7 demo in DCS. Now technically we're actually not flying the Harrier GR7, we're flying the AV8B in DCS but this demo is going to be a one-to-one, -one, hopefully, ish. Uh, replica of the real Harrier GR7 flown by Flight Lieutenant Dave Haynes in the year 2000 in Shoreham, a little airfield in the UK. Now, of course, in DCS we have the AV-8B, like I say, which for all intents and purposes is almost identical in terms of flying this display. Uh, now, the reason we're doing the Shoreham display from the year 2000 is because there is a great video of it online. It's not very high res, it's quite old, but it doesn't matter so much because it's great in terms of all the info that you can get out of it. Um, the pilot, Dave Haynes, is actually flying through and he is talking through the entire demo of what he's doing. Is he putting the gear up or the water or whatever? Um, and we can actually replicate probably about 95% of this entire demo without guessing, uh, you know, what's he doing? Because we can either see it in the video, there's some HUD shots, um, and it's just perfect. Uh, now, obviously, there are like some instances where you just have to guess, you know, and I've done that. I had a look at the demo and I, I you know, I thought, okay, nozzle about 30 degrees or so. Um, so I've looked over it about a million times, as you might imagine. Um, I've scribbled down my own kind of hieroglyphs, and you'll probably see that in the left hand side of your screen. Uh, again, it's kind of a combination of the Arresti system used for aerobatics, but also kind of my own because, you know, that just doesn't cater for stall hovering and Harrier stuff and display stuff so um, they're kind of my own scribbles but that is sort of like the, the the program the display you know laid out in a logical sense so I could follow it in my head and try and repeat all the maneuvers now I've done this about a million times now I feel uh, for the last two weeks or so I've been practicing trying to get it as close as I possibly can and I could tell you it's pretty damn challenging um, not least because hovering the Harrier which I think is the same sort of issue in terms of you know her hovering helicopters in DCS also, um, because you don't have that peripheral vision that you have in real life, and you don't have the seat of the pants feeling. So you know, in other words, you know, you, even if there's like a minute um, acceleration, you know, up or down in real life, you might already be correcting it without even looking at the instruments or nothing. Um, but in DCS, of course, that's just impossible. So we have to rely purely on our visuals and looking side to side to see a reference of the ground um, and also looking at our instruments, the HUD, etc. So my point is it's a little bit more challenging in the sim, I think, than in real life, believe it or not. Um, and the other thing to consider is that the real life Harrier you'll see in the video is very sharp in terms of its control input response. Um, you know, you'll see when he checks the stick, the aircraft does very sharp, very diff kind of definitive movements. Um, and even in terms of hovering, you know, he, he's like, he's, he's going forward, he moves the nozzles a little bit, boom, the aircraft stops, and then again back, and he stops. And all these maneuvers, they're all very, very quite precise, um, and it's very difficult to do that with the DCS area, unfortunately. As much as I love this module, I think it's freaking awesome, you know, everything is just a, li a little bit, it takes a little bit more time. So I don't think I'll be able to keep up with his space in terms of all the maneuvers he's doing, just because this aircraft is just, like I say, a little bit more lethargic. Uh, but nonetheless, we shall try our very, very best to try and get it as accurate as we possibly can. Like I say, huge amount of practice um, to get to this point. So let's hope that we can just get in and nail it. We have two good engine sides. You're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. up on the brakes off the brakes let's go looking for 70 knots okay. Look at 70 knots there it is go, staying. back to 70 yeah coming up here's coming up Can't away, but 70 knots all right climb it up uh he had about 200 220 feet in the reciprocal heading here we're gonna have close to 300 reason being is because the ground is sloping down towards this road from the runway so that's going to be absolutely fine. Keep it coming around. Keep it coming around. Nice and tight. 
tight. So adjust the nozzles down to 70. Okay, very good. Keep it coming all the way around to uh, 55 degree offset from the runway, which is going to be heading up to. Eight, eight. After that, accelerate, clean up, go from there. Here comes two at eight. Accelerate, nozzle's coming aft. Get rid of the stall flap, HUD mode, trim down. Get rid of our Check. stall flap, looking for 230 knots. Looking for 230 knots. 230, there it is. Out. Pitch up, 35. Check. Three quarter roll left turn. Bit of rudder. <clears throat> Check. Okay, so. That felt a little bit more sluggish than the uh, Harrier in the video. That's just because this is the simulation, and that's the way it, you know, it flies. You know, we've got to make do with what we got. So, setting ourselves up for the inverted pass, 420 knots, 500 feet minimum. Our case could be a touch higher. Okay, just send a little bit too low, but that's fine. We'll get that back up. Go inverted. 120, 500 feet. There it is. 500 feet, 420 knots. Past the okay, roll out. There's the railway. Okay, and check. chop 35. Uh, and a half G. Check. Three quarter check. roll. And roll. Always. Check. Okay, coming in for the barrel in towards show center. So we're looking for a parking lot on this side of the river, which is just over here. We overfly that. That is going to set ourselves ourselves up very very nicely um, for the barrel roll. So here we are, roll out. Run again and Pitch up. Up. And roll. And by rolling towards the crowd. And rolling out the on roll show out the crowd center. center. There we are. Nice. About there. I'm looking for and an ailer roll. Check. Go. Ailer on roll. Check. And up. Five, two. Pitch up 35 as always. Check. check. Three quarter roll as always. Check. Two and a half over the top. Looking good. All right, pulling to five and a half to six G around the corner, and we're looking to set ourselves up for the match rate turn. Uh, it's going to be 380 to 400 knots in the turn. Uh, we start off with a three-quarter roll. Check in. There's the crowd. Here oh. we go. Here comes the three-quarter roll. Crowd. There it is. Don't descend. Just get the height back up a little bit. Descend a little too much. There we are. 500 feet. It's looking good. All right. Right out, start increasing now over lower grounds. Looking good, 3D knots looking good. Good, five and a half to six G, perfect. Keep it there, keep it there, just on the thrust a little bit. Right, keep the turn going until the 55 degree offset, heading of 218. Uh, there we go, there, there it is, check. 218. Yeah. 35, check. check. Oh. Three quarter roll, check. Okay, setting ourselves up for the last non VTOL stall maneuver. Uh, and that is going to be the high speed pass, 500 knots minimum at 100 feet. In our case, could be a touch higher. Pull up, pull up. Dive Here we down. go, dive it down. Pull up, pull up. Okay, there it is, 130 knots. Far, sorry, 120 feet, feet, 500 knots. Check. Check. Roll out. And pull. Six and a half at least. There we go. Okay, air brakes coming out. I don't know if he has used the air brake in real life. Um, no idea. This part of the video is missing, supposedly because it's a little boring and takes a while. Uh, but this is actually one of the most challenging parts of the entire display, believe it or not. We have to try and set ourselves up for um, basically perpendicular to the runway, bring the aircraft into a hover in front of show center. So doing this is going to be tricky. It's going to be very tricky. I gotta be honest, I overshot the runway many, many times in practice, so. Right, stall flap, nozzles coming aft, cut mode, get rid of the air brake. Uh, so, over there where that C 130 is with the two F 15s, that's pretty much show center, so that is what we're gonna be aiming for. Landing. It's a 073 Landing. reference heading. Uh, just get rid of Bitch and Betty for, for a sec. We're aware about the gear descending down to about 150 feet. In our case, it could be uh, a little higher. Get the water flowing. There it is. There's the point Just I'm reduce picked. the nozzle angle. Now decelerating. Descending all the while. There's the gear warning. Not a major problem. Okay, good. Increase the nozzle angle. Keep it coming 
down. Keep it coming down. Keep it coming down. Keep it coming down. Still coming down. Keep it coming down. Keep it coming down. There's water flowing there. So about 180 feet would be good here. Looking good. Okay. Nozzles to 82 or so is good. Here's coming, coming down. down. Now. Okay. Just stop the hover. Stop the hover. Okay. We are in hover. Front of show center. Looking good. All right. Your reciprocal right, heading right of 293. 253. There it is, 253. Okay. Bit of power. Gear coming up. Gears coming up. Nozzles are coming to 30. Go, and let's go up. And pitch up. Plug in for 40, 40 degrees. Goes degrees. up. Here we go. Get rid of the water. Don't need that now. Okay, 1,000 feet. Throttle down. Keep it coordinated. Keep it coordinated. That's 1,000 feet. There we go. Just level it up there. Again, this part of the video is missing. Um, I believe, again, because it's just a touch boring, I guess. Not much happening. But basically, we're setting ourselves up for a very, very steep approach for a touch and go. It's going to be nozzles fully aft. And uh, we'll be aiming for about 25 degrees pitch down and uh, hopefully do a touch and go or a bounce, as Lieutenant Dave Haynes calls it, from show center. Nozzles to go fully forward. So nozzles are coming aft. And Landing. yes, we can put the gear down now, so that's good. Um, when I say aft, by the way, I meant increasing nozzle angle. Just get a little bit confusing. Okay, nozzle's 98. Aiming for about 25 or 23 is what he had. 23 pitch down. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Power, power. Okay, there's the bounce. Okay, that wasn't quite as tidy as he had it, but anyway, water's flowing. Gear's coming up, looking for 100 feet. Stop the aircraft in the hover. Okay, nozzle's 82, set. There's 100 feet, there there's, Check. 100. there's the hover. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Okay, let's move back, increase nozzle angle. And uh, he had a ground speed readout in the HUD, we don't. So we're going to look for 15 knots airspeed as an indication. There it is, 16. Let's play around with the nozzles to just keep it right. And the pitch, there's 17. So just pitch down ever so slightly. 17 still okay. It's very tricky to get it perfect. 16 knots, looking good. Where are we? There's show center. Okie dokie. And let's stop that. So let's just put nozzle 73 for a sec. Pitch down for a sec. There it is, nozzle's back to 82, set. 110 feet, it's good. Okay, there we are in the hover. There okay. we are, stop. Let's rotate towards the crowd, put the gear down. 073 reference is a pretty good reference. 070 is pretty good as well. Just, uh, there we go. Okay, and now we need to do sort of like bow down, nod to the crowd, so let's do that. Let's increase the nozzle angle. Just keep it coordinated. And back to 82. Just went up by about 10 feet. That's okay. Okay, just don't move forward. Over the runway is good. Okay, now let's move sideways. So 073, so we keep over the runway if we can. Looking for 15 knots. Nice and gentle. Move back a bit towards the runway, so use the nozzle. Here's the height there. Engine's fine, fuel's fine. About 15 knots sideways. It's okay. Over the runway, still good. Keep that going, okay. Just off the heading, off the heading a little bit. There we go, 17 Okay, we're getting speed. ready to stop okay, now. Stop there. Okay, 130 feet is good. Okay, stop the hover. There we are, still over the runway, almost. We just moved slightly off the runway, which is fine. That should work out quite nicely now for the twirl, so let's go up. Let's do the twirl. Not too much. Not too much. Okay. Getting ourselves back on the runway center line here. And pitch down for landing. And now 
they going down? Gear is definitely down. We've got 50 knots minimum. Got 50 Your knots. Pumps. Power, power. There it is. And landing is great. Flash that water off. Okay, here we go. Flaps up. Water is off. Nozzles to 30 and trim down 4 units. 4 units set. Okay, now we can turn off the runway. Alright, I mean, I'm going to say that was mission successful. Um, no, it wasn't perfect and, you know, yeah, there was definitely bits that were a little rough around the edges. Um, but it's, trust me, this is like attempt 355, I think. Um, the, the amount of practice it took to get it right. The one I'm most annoyed about is that bounce, because I got that bounce pretty good uh, when I started practicing this, and now with all the subsequent attempts where everything else is pretty good, the bounce seems to be missing, you know? I keep touching down and almost rolling on the runway for a while. It's, just, oh, it's so annoying. That's my biggest ugh, complaint with myself at the moment. But um, overall, though, I have to say, uh, okay, I know it may not look perfect. I know it may have looked a little bit rough here and there, and, you know, the, the, it wasn't quite as precise. But like I say, part of it is because this aircraft is just very sluggish compared to the one in real life. Um, and part of it is just because uh, I think there's maybe a bit of input lag and output lag um, with the controls uh, in the sim. There's just not much you could do about it. Um, it is a little bit annoying, but it's just something we have to deal with. You know, it's still a great simulation. I still love the Rasbam AV-8B. I think it's freaking amazing. Um, but it's just, you know, it's got its limitations, unfortunately, as a simulation. Uh, nonetheless, I think we've made it work. Y you would have probably seen that uh, the references are a little bit different because Shoreham is a very narrow runway um, relative to this one uh, and I could have found a shorter narrow runway in DCS also uh, especially in Nevada but the problem with those strips is that they are like uh, 2,000 to 4,000 feet elevation which is not good for hovering really not good especially now with the latest update from Rasbam uh, it's it's super super tricky uh, to hover the Harrier like it's really reduced on power almost to the point where I feel it's almost underpowered but anyway uh, it's 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 flyable, but it's very tricky. As you can see, we've burned about uh, 2,000 pounds of fuel doing that in very very short display. Uh, we started with less than 50% of fuel, uh, so it's it's tough. It's very very tough. Now you probably see that in the video uh, that GR7 Harrier doesn't have outer pylons on the wings. Now, fortunately, I can't remove that, and the Rasbam module just doesn't let you remove it, so we're stuck with them. Uh, couldn't get that part exact as well. So I hope you'll excuse me if you do, you know these little touches aren't quite right and also you'll probably notice that there isn't that many aircraft in the display uh, air show line here um, and the reason being is entirely because with OBS recording it is so difficult for me to try and make this not lag whilst I record it still lags when I record it's still awful relative to no recording so if I wasn't recording I could probably increase the amount of airplanes there times three and it would still look pretty cool but uh, I can't do that with recording, so again, I wish I could. I wish I could just, you know, recreate the entire, like, proper air show line with all the people there and everything, but it's going to be impossible to record it with OBS. It's just going to, it's just going to quit, so. Anyway, one day when I get a 3090, maybe we can repeat that with a proper crowd line, but for now, we make do with what we got. So, anyway, hope you enjoy that one. Please smash the like button if you could. That would really help me out, especially after all this practice to get to this point. Um, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one for some more air show stuff, perhaps real flying aerobatics, maybe some Boeing 737 stuff. All right, take it easy.